on this week's program, another edition of Ag in the Courtroom with the uh, Washburn Ag Law and Taxation Professor, Dr. Roger McCohen. Also features from the Kansas Soybean Commission, Kansas Grain Sorghum, and Kansas Department of Agriculture, and our updates from the Kansas Livestock Association and Pinion. I'm Ken Rogers. This is Authentic Ag. Brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers, Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919, KFB.org, and the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat, online at kswheat.com. Time now for another version of Ag in the Courtroom and joining us, Dr. Roger McCohen, who is an agriculture law and a tax professor at the Washburn School of Law at, uh, in Topeka. Uh, Dr. McCohen, always great to catch up with you. Good to be with you, Ken. It's, uh, I always enjoy our, our talks that we have and I hope people find them beneficial. Okay, the couple of topics we want to hit this month, very interesting. One that's been in the news and we're all kind of understanding it, uh, the, you know, we all understand that the Dean Foods, the big uh, uh, dairy conglomerate, uh, filed bankruptcy, but uh, many farmers started getting notices that uh, uh, they had contracts they needed to pay regardless if they had a place to deliver their product. Uh, uh, this sounds very strange, but there is uh, things in the law that uh, you may have to uh, proceed. Well, yeah, uh, dairy farmers that receive these letters do have to respond, and I want to make sure we're clear on that. These are not entirely bogus. Uh, they may not be entirely legitimate, but they're not, uh, they're not something just to throw in the trash. You have to respond to it. What this involves, Ken, is a specific provision in the bankruptcy code that basically says if you did business with a debtor that or with another business that then subsequently files bankruptcy and you had business transactions with them you got paid by them within 90 days of them filing bankruptcy that uh, the preferential uh, payment rule allows the bankruptcy trustee once that company files bankruptcy to reach back and try to claw all those monies back that the debtor paid within 90 days of filing and so that's what these demand letters from the law firm representing the bankruptcy trustee are all about. They're saying, well, you sold milk to Dean Foods within 90 days of them filing bankruptcy. Well, you need to pay that back. And that could be several thousand dollars worth. Um, and so it's a big deal uh, to these dairy farmers. Is this something that's happened in other uh, agriculture companies that uh, if it has, it's been a yeah. long time since I remember anything maybe of, uh, of this significance. Yeah. Yeah, we went through uh, this with the Vera Sun bankruptcy about a decade ago. Now, that really didn't touch Kansas too much. That was in Iowa, Minnesota, South Dakota. Uh, and they had a plant or two in Nebraska. Uh, but that ethanol bankruptcy with respect to Vera Sun was a big deal. And the, and the letters went out to corn farmers then saying, you sold corn to Vera Sun uh, within 90 days. You've got you to pay the proceeds back of that sale. Now, I would say this. They can do that. There is a provision in the bankruptcy code that allows the trustee to do that. However, uh, I think just about all of the dairy farmers have a legitimate defense, and it's known as the ordinary uh, course of business defense. In other words, if you sold milk to Vera Sun in that 90-day preferential period before they filed bankruptcy, but it was in your normal course of doing business, you know, they, they buy milk every two weeks, so they come out and pick up milk and you get a milk check and you've got your stubs and your receipts and all of that, uh, you need to have your attorney put a letter um, responding uh, to the uh, Dean Foods letter. You need to have your attorney put a, a letter together showing you know, we do business, my client does business with them. It's in the ordinary course of business. It was a contemporaneous exchange of value, go away. Uh, and I think that that's the case. In fact, I don't think these letters really should have gone out just carte blanche. Uh, Dean Foods needed to do their research and pinpoint whether there were actually any dairy farmers that didn't sell milk in the ordinary course of business. Uh, I think the vast majority, if not all, of the dairy farmers uh, can successfully assert that defense. But the point is, 
if you don't assert that defense, you will get sued. And uh, that may be if, if less than 25,000 is in controversy, you can get sued in your, your home jurisdiction, but you don't, you don't want to go through that. So you need to have competent bankruptcy counsel put a response letter back uh, responding to the, the trustee. Dr. Roger McCohen is an agriculture law and taxation professor at the Washburn School of Law in Topeka. Let's take a break. Uh, back with more in just a moment. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. You can always email me at Corey at SureCropFertilizers.com and with any questions you have, and we'd be glad to answer it and work with you. And uh, joining us uh, is Dr. Roger McCohen. It is Ag in the Courtroom, and uh, he is a agriculture law and taxation professor at Washburn School of Law. And uh, Dr. McCohen, this second topic we want to talk about is one that you kind of have a scratch in our head. Uh, you could, uh, what, get a lifetime ban of owning a firearm if you um, file a tax return with, with a false statement? Tell us, that that, that sounds very odd. Uh, well, that is what the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals said in a split opinion just before a couple days before Thanksgiving. And, yeah, what they said was, well, you commit a felony if you put a false statement on a tax return and uh, which this individual did and and uh, it, it potentially carries a prison sentence and the cir third circuit says well technically you fall into the category of a felon and congress has said that felons can't earn firearms and that goes for life and uh, the point of this one and the dissent was pretty strong it was a trump judge that dissented in this one said look uh, a categorical uh, categorization of all felonies, stripping someone of a, an individual fundamental constitutional right, such as uh, the right to own a firearm, which it's been defined as an individual fundamental right since the Heller case in the Supreme Court a few years ago, uh, said you just can't strip that for life upon the commission of a nonviolent first offense uh, felony that didn't carry, uh, didn't actually serve, the person didn't actually serve any prison time. They just had to pay a hefty fine, had to, uh, got home, some home probation uh, and in-home probation and confinement and probation for a while, and then uh, you know, pay the taxes back plus a penalty. And it's, uh, this one, I think you can put a, a stamp on this, call FedEx and pick up the case and just take it to the Supreme Court because that's where this one's gonna go. I do not think this will stand at the Supreme Court. Justice Barrett and Justice Kavanaugh have, uh, in other cases, non-Supreme Court cases before they joined the Supreme Court, uh, de decided cases very similar to the rationale that the dissent used in this case. So if they can convince two of their other colleagues on the court to take the case, I don't think that'll be a problem. Uh, the Supreme Court will take this case, and I would anticipate it'll probably be a 5-4 opinion, uh, reversing what the circuit did. But that's just my guess at this point in time. But as it stands, yeah, it's a weird one where the federal court said, yep, you commit a felony. We don't care whether it's nonviolent or not. Every felony is defined by the Congress as being serious and it strips you of your gun rights. Yeah, I just 
it, when I think when the, we get to the end of this, I don't think that's going to be the ultimate result. If folks want to uh, learn more about these things we've talked about, other uh, cases that you uh, write and blog about, how can they do that? Well, I, these, uh, what we talked about today are a couple of blog articles uh, on my blog. You can go to washburnlaw.edu slash W-A-L-T-R. And on the homepage down the left-hand side, uh, you can find Agricultural Law and Taxation blog, the link to it. Just click on that link. Uh, that'll take you to the actual blog. If you want an email alert when I add something, which is about 130 times a year, there's a technical article um, on these various topics. There is on back on the homepage of, of my uh, website site there next to where you can find the link for the blog there's an email alert that you can sign up for and so if you see a topic you get the alert you, you'll see kind of a header in the uh, email if that looks interesting to you, you can read it if not there's also a delete button you can just move on all right well as always we appreciate the insights of uh, uh, what you're following and, and hopefully helping us getting us better informed of what's going on with agriculture in the courtroom so Thanks a lot, and, and we'll talk with you again early next year already. Yeah, yeah, and we'll probably summarize some of the big developments of 2020 and uh, uh, hopefully some good things to talk about out of 2020 instead of just all bad stuff. But I really appreciate it. Thanks, Ken. Thanks. Dr. Roger McCohen, who is a uh, ag law specialist and a tax uh, professor at the Washburn School of Law here in Topeka, has joined us. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas, we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer it more quickly. Transportation infrastructure for Kansas-grown commodities is a hot topic in the state right now. Transportation costs are part of the cost of doing business for farmers, and maximizing infrastructure to move goods more efficiently is key. A collaborative effort of the Kansas Department of Agriculture, Kansas Department of Transportation, Kansas Department of Commerce, state commodity groups, and others is exploring waterway, road, and bridge transportation and loading capacity on vessels. The goal of this Kansas Commodity Flow Market Development Team is to evaluate commodity flow and find or enhance access opportunities to create market advantage for farmers in the state. The Kansas Ag Growth Strategy prioritizes such transportation efficiency and the Ike program through KDOT exists to address current and future transportation opportunities and challenges. More about these initiatives is available at agriculture.ks.gov slash aggrowth and www.ksdot.org slash ike. In other soy transportation news, the Soy Transportation Coalition convened its annual meeting virtually November 30th. The agenda revolved around the Lower Mississippi River dredging project, rural infrastructure improvement, and officer elections. Kansas Soybean Commissioner Mike Beller of Howard completed his service as STC Chairman. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end-user demands, the soybean checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. 
Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. As we all know, 2020 has been an unusual year, to say the least. But as this memorable year comes to a close, all of us at the Kansas Department of Agriculture want to extend our gratitude to all of you across the state of Kansas who have persevered throughout the year and once again have shown why agriculture remains the state's largest industry, employer, and economic driver. We've always known that agriculture means hard work done every single day of the year by thousands of people involved in ag production in all corners of Kansas. And we are proud to serve you and to advocate for you. This year, the essential work that you do to keep the food supply chain moving was made even more visible here in Kansas and throughout the nation and the world. You continued to care for animals, plant and harvest crops, and process, transport, and deliver meat and other food products. You added plexiglass barriers in your businesses, you expanded your online capabilities, you added food delivery options, and you reached out to consumers to sell directly to them in their homes. You changed the way you do business, learning how to hold meetings and conferences online, and you did all this while helping your staff stay safe and healthy and supporting your employees, neighbors, and family who are pivoting to work from home when necessary due to quarantines or school kids at home. In August, during our annual Ag Growth Summit, which, like many things, was held as a virtual event this year, we took some time to recognize Ag Heroes, members of the Kansas agriculture family who went above and beyond to help in their communities. But we know that there are thousands of you who were Ag Heroes this year. So for all you have done for the state and for the agriculture industry in 2020, the Kansas Department of Agriculture says thank you. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. staying satisfactory throughout the fall, Kansas farmers have harvested their grain sorghum for the 2020 growing season and likely sold their crop at a good price with sorghum basis historically high. In fact, by the end of November and just three months into the 2020 and 2021 marketing year, sorghum's previously set export records have been typically exceeded on a weekly basis. To date, U.S. sorghum exports for this marketing year have reached monumental 178.8 million bushels, or 68% of USDA's export projection. Grain is selling at an average of $4.45 per bushel, including here in Kansas, but our sorghum growing peers on the East Coast have been selling for as high as $7 or $8 per bushel out there. Basis has remained steady across the sorghum belt and along the Gulf Coast. So as a new year dawns and winter ebbs on, growers are now considering their cropping options for 2021, and with the prospect for a good sorghum price, along with the potential for a large portion of the sorghum belt planting into a less than full soil profile of water, sorghum seed will likely be in high demand. Anecdotes from seed companies show seed bookings have been brisk and significantly ahead of their 2020 in some regions of the country. Although overall seed supply should satisfy the market, the demand could certainly exceed some supplies, particularly as you seek out the most popular sorghum hybrids. Those interested in growing sorghum should begin booking seed now. For Kansas Grain Sorghum, this is Adam York. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, 
market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP. That brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. W Ranch, owned and operated by Josh and Quinn Hoy of Cedar Point, has been selected as the recipient of the 2020 Kansas Leopold Conservation Award. Presented during the Kansas Association of Conservation Districts Convention, the $10,000 award recognizes landowner achievement in the field of voluntary conservation. Unconventional ranching on protected prairie is how the Hoys describe what they do on Flying W Ranch, a bison and beef cattle ranch located on the tall grass prairie of the Kansas Flint Hills. The Hoys take pleasure in understanding how livestock and wildlife can flourish while improving soil health and water quality. Their peers call them visionaries for how they ranch in sync with nature thanks to innovative conservation practices. After removing miles of fence within their ranch, they adopted an instinctive migratory grazing method for their livestock. It brings grass and forbs back to damaged areas and protects riparian areas. In addition to grazing techniques, they control woody and invasive plants by patch burning and mechanical removal instead of herbicides. The Conservation Award was presented by the Sand County Foundation, American Farmland Trust, Kansas Association of Conservation Districts, and the Ranchland Trust of Kansas. In addition to the $10,000 award, the Hoys received a crystal depicting renowned conservationist Aldo Leopold. Are you looking for Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans? Now is a good time to look at your options with Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. A Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan can help cover certain out-of-pocket expenses Medicare doesn't cover. Things like deductibles, coinsurance, and certain limitations that can be costly in the event of an accident or illness. With Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans, you have options to Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans with four levels of affordable coverage and service from an organization known for its commitment serving Kansans. We encourage you to compare our rates. For more information and to get a quote, contact a Farm Bureau Financial Services agent near you or visit kfbhealthplans.com. Medicare supplements insured by Members Health Insurance Company, Columbia, Tennessee. Not connected with or endorsed by the U.S. or state government. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldy Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldy Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldy Seed today. Good morning, folks. Colette here with Pinion, a division of Keiko Isom. Holiday season is in full swing, and while everyone rushes around buying gifts, grain sales have slowed. We have seen a 50 to 60 cent pullback in beans and a 15 or so cent pullback in corn from the recent highs. Wheat has also backed off recent highs, but still hanging around levels we haven't seen for a while, much like beans. Many are looking for what will make the rally continue. Important things to watch will be the weather story, both in South America and at home, exports, and what kind of numbers we will see from the USDA. While the dollar remains weaker and carryout numbers are friendly, we have certainly seen that things can change on a dime this year, especially the way the grain markets have moved. It would not be surprising to see the bean market continue to pull back without additional news to feed the bulls. 
We have seen beans rally $3 since August, and many days the bean market has traded in a range of 20 cents or greater. So it's important to note that beans moving a dollar or so isn't unreasonable. These are levels we haven't seen in a long time, so decision making can become more difficult. If you're wondering how to make these market moves benefit you, give us a call at 888-452-8751. 2021 is fast approaching and the markets are moving. I'm Colette Pinion and I hope you have a Merry Christmas. And that's our show this week. Uh, we thank you for joining us. Uh, boy, these are interesting times and yet again with the COVID situation, uh, do your best to do social distancing, wash your hands. If you don't feel good, stay home and mask up. It's the right thing to do. I'm Ken Rogers. We'll see you next time on Authentic Ad. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. These days, no one can afford to take the risk of being without financial protection against high health care costs, not even for a few days. Kansas Farm Bureau health plans offer short-term health care coverage to fill in those temporary gaps. Short-term health plans can provide you with medical coverage when you are between health plans, helping lower your potential financial risk. Learn more at kfbhealthplans.com or contact a Farm Bureau financial services agent near you. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP. That brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you.